Campaign 2018 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, Marshfield Clinic Health System, and Campaign 2018 partner Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Last night was just, I did do one in Hayward the other day, but that was brutally hot. Yeah, that was way up in Hayward. But uh, yeah, last night was really. I came in, I'm like, hey, we just could have had the lights off for a while. Sitting in the walking cooler for the presidential. Yeah, that I should I should do that all the time. I sit in a, a Miller a case of Miller Lite. So I'll say some stuff first, and then you can fire away. Uh, well, great to be here today. As you mentioned, we've toured the state, Rebecca Clayfish and I, uh, talking about our new plan for the next four years. It's about how we keep Wisconsin working for generations to come. Uh, it's about connecting students with careers, uh, making more investments in our technical colleges, uh, doing more to help with schools, but particularly uh, advancing youth apprenticeships in the seventh and eighth grade. We've already more than doubled them in high school. That's one key part. Secondly, uh, it's about keeping our graduates here. One element of that is giving our graduates uh, a tax break. Uh, up to $5,000 if they agree to stay and work here for five years in the state of Wisconsin. The third, we're talking about helping our seniors afford to stay uh, in their homes, uh, both for peace of mind, but also uh, in part because we need their help uh, mentoring the next workforce, and in some cases even being willing to work uh, part-time to help with the workforce. And fourth and final, it's about helping working families make ends meet, particularly when it comes to child care, knowing that's often a barrier or a partial barrier to employment. And so we're proposing a child tax credit or child care tax credit uh, that would help working families here in the state of Wisconsin. All those things are about a part of our plan that helps us keep Wisconsin moving forward. As I said in my comments, I think that's the key difference between Tony Evers and I. He embraces, and we've seen it all throughout the primary season, embraces ideas uh, that were largely the ones that got us in trouble in the past. We don't want to go backwards. We don't want to go back to the days of, of double-digit tax increases, of billion-dollar budget deficits, and a record job loss in the state. We want to build off our successes, record levels of employment this year in this state, record low unemployment, uh, well below 8% in each of the last uh, five months, and hopefully news will show in the next, uh, the next day or so, uh, six months in a row. All of those things lead to Wisconsin heading in the right direction moving forward. We don't want to turn backwards, and I think that's what this race is all going to be about. Woke up to a bunch of Donald Trump tweets about Wisconsin, including an endorsement for you. Your thoughts on the endorsement, and do you think you'll see him on, well, are you inviting him onto your campaign trail? Well, on that part, as I've said before, I would anticipate if he comes to the state between now and November, it's going to be to help the U.S. Senate nominee. We now know, obviously, that's Leah Buchmeier. Uh, because the president's aligned uh, with the Senate being a federal office. But obviously, as I've said many times to you in the press before, uh, I would join with the president if he's campaigning for the Senate candidate and would certainly welcome and encourage that. But in the end, uh, tweets, campaigning or otherwise, people in this state are smart, uh, no matter where they sit politically. They know this election is not about whether you like or not uh, the president of the United States. It's about who's going to be governor over the next four years. It's really going to be a contest between me and Tony Evers. They're going to try and morph it into something else. But it's really about the clear choice between whether we move forward and build off our successes with the plans we laid out today, or whether we take a giant U-turn and, uh, and head backwards. And for the sake of my kids and all the other kids and grandkids in this state, I hope we keep moving forward. Are you happy to see the endorsement? Sure, again, I'll, I, I'm, I love the fact that you highlighted. We've created tens of thousands of jobs. I think anytime you get that kind of national attention highlighting the good work we've done in creating jobs in the state, so much the better. You opposed raising the gas tax, but how would you pay for roads without sending the debt level skyrocketing with no additional gas tax? Well, we're going to lay out our plan. It'll be part of our, our budget plans going forward. Uh, we've been able to invest $24 billion into the state's transportation system uh, without raising the gas tax. That compares to the $21 billion that Jim Doyle did in the past. And uh, we believe we'll, we'll be able to do that through a whole series of things we'll lay out in the future. I'm actually, quite frankly, shocked uh, that when I said that uh, Tony Evers needs to tell us if he's going to raise the gas tax by a dollar or more, uh, that at least initially, before his consultants got to him, supposedly, uh, he said everything's on the table. 
uh, whether it's the higher gas tax, toll roads, or anything else. Uh, that's certainly not the tack I'm taking. I will never raise the gas tax without an equal or greater reduction. I've got a plan to continue to fix our roads. We've actually made one of the largest investments in local road aids to help our help our municipalities and counties fix roads and bridges that most of them have seen in nearly two decades. Those are the ones responsible for filling potholes and they need to use those uh, record levels of money in terms of an increase to do just that. Governor, you said this morning Tony Evers was for your education plan before he wasn't running for governor. I just spoke with him and his answer to that was, well, it was mostly his plan and you supported 90% of it. Do you think education is going to be one of the key issues here just because of who he is? Well, it ties in the workforce. Our focus, as it is again tonight with our plan for the next four years, is tying education into building the workforce for the needs that we have. In the past, uh, our problem was education led to a lot of people graduating and leaving the state of Wisconsin. That was because of the policies that people like Tony Evers supported in the past. We don't want to go down that path. That would be a giant step backwards. We want to go forward. Uh, but it, it's, a, it's a bit of, a, um, a bit of uh, an interesting argument. He called it pro-kid budget. Those were the words he stated in the Wisconsin State Journal article on February 6, 2017. He said, my budget was a pro-kid budget. He said, my priorities in the budget aligned with his. Uh, the journal, or the state journal's uh, story at the time actually noted that our budget proposal added several hundred million dollars more than his did. And so whether he's claiming responsibility for it or not, the bottom line is he liked the budget. And so it's hard to turn around and become a politician and do political doublespeak and say, well, now you're not, you don't like it. Uh, I'm a pro-education governor, not just because I invested more actual dollars into education than ever before, but because we gave schools the tools through Act 10, something that Tony Evers wants to undo, we gave them the tools to save more than $3 billion and at the same time, more importantly, be able to staff based on merit, uh, pay based on performance. That means schools all across the state can put the best and the brightest in the classroom. Uh, Tony Evers would undo all of that. And so I gladly, uh, on education, on workforce, on taxes, on health care, on any issue out there, I'd la gladly stack our ideas up against his. Governor, right. uh, Wisconsin GOP is planning to release an attack ad on Thursday against Tony Evers. You said this is going to be a positive campaign on your side. Do you support those types of ads? Well, our ad that we're running right now ties into what I announced today here and elsewhere, and that ties into our plan to keep Wisconsin working for generations to come. It is consistent with the positive ads we've been running all throughout the campaign. It's just the next step of what we're going to do next. But I think it's completely legitimate for the Republican Party of Wisconsin uh, to be able to run an ad on the facts, uh, not on hearsay, but on the facts. And the facts are that Tony Evers failed to do his job as superintendent of public instruction to keep our students safe. Uh, a school teacher, uh, a male teacher in Middleton was watching pornography uh, on a computer in a classroom that offended other teachers, including at least one female teacher who turned him in. The school district, because of that and other things, terminated him. The courts, after years, forced that teacher back into the school district. The school district, uh, the parents, uh, I myself asked him to look at re revoking that license. Uh, he cited some bureaucratic excuse. Uh, that's not doing your job. Doing your job is saying, I will do whatever it takes to keep students safe. And if the courts have to order it to shift it on that, Instead, we had to change the law so that he or any other superintendent in the future couldn't use a bureaucratic excuse as a reason not to revoke uh, the license of someone who was not only a porn-watching teacher, but who he knew had commented on the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, had commented on the uh, bodies of uh, middle school children, uh, uh, middle school girls in particular, talking about Rebecca Clayfish about that before. She said that was probably the most damning thing of all of that, having two girls who are about that age. And I think it is just incumbent, if you fail to do your job, you shouldn't be asking for a promotion, yet that's what Tony Evers is doing. Do all right, thank you, everybody. That's all we have. He did it because he said he, he, he relied on a bureaucratic excuse. If I was him, as I said at the time, I would have revoked the license, and I would have said, make the courts forces to it. I think it was looking at a, a very weak interpretation of what he could do. Uh, the law was clear to me. Uh, you're putting a, a child at risk if you've got a teacher in the classroom, not on, on a location outside of school, not somewhere else. He was in a classroom, whether or not there was a child, a student in there at the time. I think the law would have been upheld. 
and I think he failed to do his job, and if you fail to do your job, you shouldn't be getting a promotion. All right, thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Campaign 2018 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, Marshfield Clinic Health System, and Campaign 2018 partner Milwaukee Journal Sentinel.